In the thousands of years of Chinese history, there have been at least 21 different dynasties that ruled over the nation. These span the time between 1600 BCE all the way until 1911 CE. The emperors that ruled over China were viewed as living gods amongst their people, so you can imagine that the literal worship they received from their people probably led them to do some pretty crazy things, but because they were gods on earth was seen as normal. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Starting off fairly normal, the emperors had certain colors that represented their status. For much of Chinese history, the color yellow was reserved for the emperor. By having his own color, he was always able to be distinguished from every other person in China. This color was chosen for the emperors because it represents center. The emperor was seen as the center of the nation. As a living god, he was also the light of the nation, and the yellow robes liken him to the sun, the light of the world. The most common strange thing that the Chinese emperors did was have a harem of concubines. While this may seem weird to us today, it was a very normal part of daily life for an emperor to have a primary bride and then also many levels of concubines. It was common for each emperor to have more than 100 women in his harem. To be chosen as a concubine was considered to be a very high honor, though it was still a form of slavery. Concubines not only saw to the emperor's sexual desires, but were also sometimes used to serve as the empress handmaidens. Once a woman or girl was selected to become an imperial concubine, she underwent a series of examinations by palace doctors to ensure that she was healthy. After these exams, she was then sorted into the strict hierarchy of the harem. Once she joined the harem, she wasn't allowed to ever leave the forbidden city without explicit permission from the emperor himself. Despite technically being slave, life inside the Forbidden City wouldn't have been too bad for the concubines. Since there were so many women in the Emperor's harem, it wasn't common for them to be seen by him. They filled their time with womanly activities such as embroidery, sewing, or music. It was also common for lower-level concubines to serve the higher-ranking ones, and maybe even the Empress herself. Their primary duty, though, was to please the Emperor in bed. To be selected for this task was a huge honor and women would receive all sorts of praise and honors if they were able to bear a child of the emperor. One emperor, Simi Yan, who lived between 236 to 290, was said to have so many concubines that he could never choose who he would spend the night with. Some say he had as many as 10,000 women in his harem. The way he came up with to make the choice was definitely a little odd. He would ride in a sheep-drawn cart and let the sheep wander through the palace. Whatever room the sheep stopped in would be the room of the lucky lady that would get the quality time with the emperor that particular evening. Another example of an emperor expanding his harem to unimaginable sizes was Emperor Xuanzong. By the end of his life, he had more than 40,000 women in his harem. Xuanzong kept adding women to his harem until the very end of his life. He was so selfish about women that when he was in his 60s, he made his own son divorce his wife so that he could make her one of his concubines. One way that emperors found their concubines was with a popular custom that started in Byzantium and Western Europe that made its way to Imperial China. This was the Bride Show. These started in China during the Song Dynasty in the 900s and went through the early 1900s. No, these weren't events that engaged women would go to for ideas and vendors for their weddings. These broad shows were where beautiful women and girls from all over the empire would be gathered and paraded in front of the emperor, who would select brides or concubines this way. During the Qing dynasty, it was not just the lower women of the middle or upper classes that went through these broad shows, but the daughters of the elite were also chosen from. They had to get passed over by the reigning emperor before they were allowed to marry anyone else. The emperors were exposed to a massive amount of money, often at a very young age. This means that they often did some pretty wild things with their money. One of the craziest things that was done was by the Emperor Xu. He ordered that a pool of wine and a forest of meat be built. This wasn't a euphemism in any way. What he wanted was exactly what it sounds like. A huge lake was constructed and filled to the brim with wine. It was so big that several canoes could fit in it at once. At the center of this lake was an island filled with trees. These trees, though, were not just any trees. The branches were actually skewers of meat. As you might imagine, this level of decadence didn't go over well with his subjects who began to rise up against this type of behavior. In response, 
Zhu allegedly burned himself a lot. On top of having an exorbitant amount of money to waste, Chinese emperors could often grow to be exceptionally cruel. Emperor Hufei is one example of this. He came to power at the young age of nine, and so went a little mad with the power. One day he came across his general, who was sleeping naked. Apparently the general had a rather round belly that fascinated the young king. The king had a target pinned to the general's stomach and shot blunted arrows at the man every day. However, it wasn't long before the general got his revenge on the young emperor though. He sent a man into the king's room while he was sleeping and had him beheaded. He then took China for himself. Another example of an emperor showing extreme cruelty can be seen in Emperor Jing of the Han Dynasty. He was playing a board game and wasn't doing so well. He responded to losing by throwing the stone game board at his opponent, which hit him in the head and killed him. One difference between Imperial China and other ruling lines is that women were not allowed to rule at all. The line passed from father to son, and if there was no son available, a cousin was selected. Other times during rough transition periods, a general or other male advisor would take over the nation. Occasionally there would be a woman that ruled for a few years in the name of her young son or sick husband, but she still was not able to rule in her own name. This was the case throughout the entire history of China with one exception. In 690 C, a woman named Wu Zeshen came to official power. Before that she was running the empire in her sick husband's stead. Once he died though, the advisors were happy enough with her performance that she was allowed to break this long-lasting tradition of men only rule. Which of these things do you think is the weirdest? Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you like this type of content.